listeners and subscribers hope all is well so i realized in my last video that i was speaking a little more truth than even i realized that the context and narrative around the censorship subject is evolving into one where again it's entrenched into the political paradigm and to those who've been paying attention it's, it's no surprise and you got to wonder you know isn't it just great how they manipulate and instigate us into taking actions we'd never take on us take on our own you know, leveraging these certain crisis or circumstances in this case to manufacture our consent to things we'd otherwise decry, right? This censorship, naturally, we'd say no way to it. But since it's being framed in a political paradigm where their political opposition is being uh, impacted by this, I guess it's OK. I mean, rarely do their tactics give you any time or room to think about anything other uh, than what they're trying to put forward, okay? And just taking a look at which direction things are trending, I think we can say a pattern has emerged here. That people are having a difficulty, again, seeing anything beyond politics or what the mainstream media mouthpiece parrots. Okay, now, I'm talking about my last video here, and if you paid attention to my last video, I outlined how essentially in the same way people jumped on the San Francisco facial recognition ban as some political statement for the left or some win for vagrants, people think this censorship, again, is... Um, simply about quieting the right, but it's not that black and white, all right? On the back end, for example, the facial recognition ban could curb the racially biased facial recognition equipped AI systems that are out there because a lot of the facial recognition systems, um, they don't work as well when the face is darker, okay? It can also curb us from being ticketed or fined within 30 seconds of us jaywalking or like we have in the United States and some states, crossing the street and texting, okay? This stuff does exist currently, the ubiquity just isn't there in the U.S. yet, okay? And if we fight back against this, hopefully it never gets there. But again, just like how there's more happening on the back end of the facial recognition pushback, there's more happening on the back end of this censorship push as well, okay? And it's not about quieting the right, all right? They're removing content that poses a danger or a threat to the standard model. Not videos debunking gender theory necessarily, but videos debunking the government's official narratives, Real alternative information is disappearing off the internet, okay? Information that could bring people on both sides of the spectrum together and not further into their political holes. Oh, and also in a way that might stir up some consternation among the powers that be. I mean, imagine that, because the content that's really being impacted here goes beyond the ostensible explanations of the mainstream narrative and prevents very coherent information with uridite. All right. Again, even to the point that your average sheeple looking at it would have to say there's something else going on than what's being touted by the mainstream. That's what's disappearing. But right now, what we're really seeing, again, is an inability for people to be able to distinguish narratives outside of that uh, dog and pony show context. OK, outside of a political context. Um because just looking at this, people's default position or approach comes from a political paradigm that says, hey, if lefty SF is pushing it back against this, then it might actually be somewhat of a good thing, right? Those people just don't want to be identified. It's ipso facto to these folks coming from that political paradigm, because that's where we are. If one side or the other endorses something or pushes back against something, then their opposition engages in the contrary. So the left wing doesn't want facial recognition, so now the right wing pushes for it. And that's exactly what I mean by detrimental political engagement, this endorsing of a measure because it sticks it to the other side, uh, even if it's at the expense of your side or America as a whole. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, basically, they've got you by the genitals, okay? And you're okay with it, which is probably why people can't put their finger on what's emerging geopolitically, okay? And I know I've probably said something like this before, and, and really it's no surprise to those with their eyes and ears open, but I don't think we can get away from ramped up geopolitical destabilization efforts. The fact is, or I guess the question is, um, who's going to be able to notice it? Who's going to be seeing it? Who's going to be looking at it? Who's going to be talking about it? Because seeing what's happening with China, Mexico, Venezuela, uh, the rhetoric around North Korea, okay, Iran, and not even mentioning all the places we're still policing around the world, okay, tensions are escalating. And these summits and meetings where the United States is in ways essentially isolating itself, that should stir up some consternation among the people as well. Because, I mean, it's no secret that U.S. public relations around the world isn't something to write home about and that we aren't looked at too favorably okay and i think that is going to play against us because i think america is being set up for a fall all right because just in general there seems to be a lot of uncertainty about which way the world heck as a whole is currently headed okay and when you actually look at things you you, you would see that all right when you get down to it people can feel something is off but we just can't pin it down exactly, okay? Because no truly thinking person out there can look at what's going on uh, here and in countries all over and say there's nothing happening. Again, it, it's generally 
like we're trending in this direction of instability. And if you want my honest opinion on it, honestly, um, I really think a lot of this is coordinated in many ways. Okay, for example, I'm sure there's quite a few people out there, even outside of the more, you know, informed circles, who would admit that there's corruption in governments. Yet that conversation doesn't bloom into the realization that these rulers dream up measures to the detriment of the people. Okay, people know these leaders lie, that politicians lie, yet they have short memories. So when folks are lied to again and again, people start to lose their sanity. Okay, they're divided and then they're conquered. But I think that there's a fix for that. And it's something that generally even I use to maintain my sanity throughout these diatribes, right? I've touted it before and I'll do it again. And while it doesn't work for everything, I do like it. And that's Occam's razor. Because really, for me, when a politician's mouth is moving, it's more than likely they're lying to you, all right? And that's real easy. In fact, there's very few politicians I'd even walk across the street for personally. It's sad, but it's true, okay? And that used to be a fairly well-adopted ideology that many forgot after Trump came along. And it's like suddenly he's outside of this Occam Razor's principle, okay? So what many often have to do is a lot of twisting and bending to explain what they're talking about when Trump's mouth is open. And oops, you know, there we go, right? We just triggered the political paradigmers because there are those people out there that can't see that it doesn't take a leftist to criticize Trump, okay? It takes a ticked off patriot with conservative values that's not afraid to criticize somebody who's obviously wearing the New World Order cologne. Okay, so what makes more sense? Some pretzel bending finesse to justify or codify what's coming out of this person's mouth? Or when their mouth is moving, they're lying to you, no matter what the punditry tries to spin. Okay, I know what I'm going with. You can decide on your own. You know, these lawmakers, policy creators, through their clever speech and obfuscated intention, they're able to leverage certain circumstances or information to manufacture our consent to things we otherwise say no way to. That's what I'm talking about in the beginning. And citing this Occam Razor's principle, I think it's safe to say, given what we discuss here on this channel, the general trajectory of nations, the one they seem to be on, is a detrimental one. And if we really look at it, it's one being coaxed by these nefarious power pyramid players and their puppets, okay? And if we just look at historical patterns, we just take a look at how someone like Hitler, right? Everybody talks about Hitler. How did Hitler seize power in Germany when in 1933 he was just chancellor and, and Hindenburg was president? Well, it was after their parliament building, right? The Reichstag was burned and gutted. That served a biggest shocker to them that was akin to our 9-11. Okay, that's when Hitler essentially stepped up and said, if you give me the power and the means that I'll, uh, I'll handle those dastardly communist terrorists. And that's when they rushed in their enabling act, just like we rushed through our Patriot Act. And not long after that, they had their national identification, their gun registrations and confiscation, the creation of their detention centers, which quickly grew into the concentration camps. I mean, if we think about it, the parallels to 9-11 are at least compelling and at the most overwhelming because after 9-11, what happened? We had the Patriot Act pushed on us, okay, which was our version of the Enabling Act. Then quickly after that, we saw our version of national registration, the real ID, the national ID card. We even have the Second Amendment infringements, uh, which are turning into gun bans and buybacks, by the way, here in America of all places. And of course, like the concentration camps, we have the creation of FEMA camps. So all the parallels are essentially there, aren't they? It's that problem reaction solution, okay, the Hegelian dialectic. So the script never really changes, only the puppets. So that's why we tend to fall victim almost every time. And really that's why in these episodes, I try to outline just some of the nuances of how the new world order works, okay? And if you look into things like Operation Mongoose, which was the plot to take down Castro, okay, Operation Northwoods, etc., you begin to see how these things actually manifest in practice. And the thing about Northwoods is it shows why 9-11 is so important, right? Since they basically used the script for Northwoods for 9-11. Okay, so Homeland Security, Patriot Act, Military Commissions Act, uh, stripping of us our rights and freedoms, the invasion of Afghanistan, the invading of Iraq. If 9-11 or any, okay, if any of these other catalyzing events, if they weren't wholly organic or if the official government story is a fraud, then everything that came in the wake of these events is also a fraud, okay? That includes the evaporation of our rights and freedoms, our civil liberties, everything everything. Yet where is the thoughtful discourse in the public sphere? The media keeps quiet, unless it's to ridicule, which is why it's our job to kick the cults of personality, aim to put power back in the hands of the people, and educate ourselves on some of these matters so we can make better informed decisions. I mean, to those outside of the informed circles, look, somehow, somewhere along the line, you were snookered away just like the rest of us, okay? So it's time to admit it and move on so you can be a trooper for truth and come over to our side. Anyway, California Carter, signing off.